Hey y'all, you ever wonder what the process is like for buying a bank owned property or REO, real estate owned property? Well, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about how that process is different from purchasing from a private owner, right? My name is Tez Robo. I'm a real estate broker and instructor in the state of New Jersey. Um, so here are the details and the differences between when you're buying from a homeowner who lives or owns the property versus a bank owned property. First, how does a private owned home or property become a bank owned property? Well, when you have a mortgage, right? Uh, when you sign your closing documents, one of the, the documents you sign is called a note, <clears throat> which means that if I fail to pay my mortgage on time or default, then I allow the bank to put a lien on the property um, and ultimately, if I'm not able to catch up, to sell it so that they can get their money out, right? Because they lent you a certain percentage and you put down a certain percentage. So then that process, once it's completed, it is now a bank-owned property. The bank now owns the property. <clears throat> so here's the process. The good news is usually if it's bank-owned, almost always it's vacant, which means that um, availability to show is is great. You can go see it pretty much anytime. It's not dependent on someone who lives in the home or their schedule. Um, however, the decision-making process and the documentation is different. So <clears throat> say that you want to put an offer on a property. You are not dealing with <clears throat> a, an individual owner. So the bank-owned property will, will be listed on an open market in most cases and will have an agent representing it just like a private owner. However, once that offer is submitted, and by the way, the offer document may be different than the typical state contract that we're used to writing offers in for a private owned property, right? So the documentation, the contract may be different. And so, and also there is an addendum that buyers uh, need to sign. That that seems pretty intimidating, honestly, pretty restrictive. It puts a lot of the risk, it shifts a lot of the risk on the buyer as opposed to your typical, you know, purchase or transaction from, um, and a, a private owner, things like, um, you know, we are not responsible for, you know, anything that that may go wrong. A lot of the times um, you can do inspection, but inspection is typically for informational purposes only, meaning you may be allowed to back away from the contract if there's really something structural going on. However, you can't use it to negotiate the price down or you can't use it to ask for repairs, things like that. Um, and there may be other, you know, fees that typically, traditionally, the seller side pays that um, the bank may look for the buyer side to, to pay, right? Things like that. Um, so those are some of the difference. The other is um, you're dealing with, okay, so typically you deal with the agent representing the seller, and then the seller makes the decision. Well, the seller is now the bank. And the bank has what we call asset managers. So these are people who have a portfolio of properties they manage in a state or multiple states and and they work business hours right and so they have many properties to look at and to decide and so you may not get a decision right away you may need to wait a little bit um and so you know those are some of the differences so how do you mitigate risk then if the bank is shifting risk to the buyer what are some risk mitigation strategies you can use? So you can pull what's called an OPRA request, O-P-R-A, Open Public Request Act. You can go to the town or the city, the property is in, and file an OPRA request and ask for all open and closed permits or any violations or anything like that, just so you know what you're dealing with, right? Because in the addendum, often it'll say the buyer is responsible for all of that. Um, um, so those are some things you can do. You can also have an attorney and make sure that you know your your um, rights are protected. You may choose to pay for a title search ahead of even uh, being under contract, just to make sure that there's no liens or judgments or anything else that may be on the property that the bank is now looking for. <clears throat> the buyer to to own so those are some of the things that that you know you can do um and it might be a great option in the current competitive market because it may not appeal to everyone some people don't know the process they may be intimidated by it um or don't know these strategies i just mentioned for you i mean just the addendum itself in most cases is honestly intimidating enough for most if you don't poke holes in it try to make sense of it but it could be a great option for you as a buyer in the current competitive market um you may not have to deal with bidding wars or you may not have to go ridiculously above asked you just have to know what you're dealing with <clears throat> be comfortable with um the language the words in the contract 
uh, and risk mitigate as much as you can. Um, and some of the homes um, uh, may have been recently renovated, like, you know, before, you know, short sales and um, bank owned are what we call distressed properties, right? For different reasons, they may not be taken care of well because somebody couldn't pay the mortgage, so surely they couldn't have the funds to renovate the home. But in recent years, we're seeing um, REO or bank owned properties being renovated by the bank prior to selling. Um, and so we also wanna make sure that the permits have been pulled for that work and that they've been closed. Um, but yeah, I just wanna share the details of how purchasing a bank owned property looks like, what are some things to look for, how do you risk mitigate, and I hope that this information was helpful to you. If it is, feel free to save it, to share it with others, and let me know what other uh, things you're curious about within the real estate space and what you'd like me to explain. All right, till next time.